So today we have Slava McKeeve talking to us about digging into Xiaomi's tea to get to Chinese money. It's Slava's fifth time speaking at DEF CON, so please welcome him back. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending the talk. Uh, I'm Slava. I have been doing mobile security research at Checkpoint for many years. Reverse engineering and vulnerability research is my daily work. When I hear the phrase trust zone or trusted environment, I imagine some secure place on a, on a device where cryptographic keys, passwords, and other security sensitive information are stored. I imagine that protection is implemented with hardware assistance and uh, major mobile chip manufacturers uh, such as MediaTek and Qualcomm are responsible for the business logic. Okay. It, in general, uh, all my assumptions are correct, but in fact, and uh, this surprises me a little, not only cheap manufacturers uh, can change the logic of the trusted code running on a smartphone. Uh, device manufacturers uh, such as uh, uh, Xiaomi uh, uh, also uh, have the ability to, to patch the trusted code and uh, add new items. Uh, in, in my research, I uh, consider the, the trusted code provided by Xiaomi as a target for attacks, and I will show you several vulnerabilities uh, in Xiaomi's uh, trusted environment, uh, which allow an unprivileged Android application to steal money from ordinary people. Well, according to the latest statistics, uh, the Far East and China account for two thirds of the world's mobile payments. And this is about four billion dollars in uh, mobile wallet transactions. Uh, let's zoom in. Uh, WeChat Pay and Alipay, and uh, are the largest uh, players in the Chinese mobile payment industry. Together, they account for about uh, ninety-five percent of the whole Chinese payment market. Uh, each of these platforms have uh, over 1 billion users, uh, so actually it's enough uh, to hack only one of them to get rich. Uh, today I focus on uh, WeChat Pay, uh, built in uh, Xiaomi devices, powered by a MediaTek chip. Why this particular combo? Because uh, Xiaomi is the most popular Chinese uh, smartphone manufacturer. MediaTek is the most popular uh, mobile chip manufacturer in the world and WeChat Pay is the most popular payment platform in China. Okay, now let's talk about the trusted environment, aka TE. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, mobile payment signatures are carried out in the TE, so uh, uh, as long as uh, TE is safe, uh, so are your payments. Uh, on the internet, you can easily find many articles about uh, the TE architecture, uh, so I, I, I note uh, uh, only the key, the key points. Uh, TE creates a virtual security world um, managed by a trusted operating system uh, which runs uh, the trusted applications. Uh, each trusted application uh, implements a specific uh, security feature and the normal world OS, in our case this is Android, uh, can send uh, a command to a, a trusted app and uh, receive a response. Uh, Xiaomi devices uh, powered by uh, Qualcomm chipsets uh, use QC, trusted OS, and MediaTek-based based devices use uh, Kinibi. In both cases, uh, Xiaomi can embed and sign the own trusted applications. On Xiaomi devices, you can easily find uh, uh, trusted apps in the directory window uh, THTA. Uh, each app is represented by an uh, unencrypted binary file, and uh, usually trusted uh, applications of the Kinibi uh, OS uh, have the MCLF uh, file format, but Xiaomi decided to co come up with uh, one of their own. Uh, actually, we don't need even to understand all, all the format fields uh, because the initial part uh, of the uh, Xiaomi's trusted app uh, is the ELF file. Uh, trusted applications can have multiple signatures uh, uh, following the magic fields. And the magic fields are the same across all trusted apps on the device. Uh, moreover, uh, they, the, same, uh, the same with the apps fields of all other devices. 
as you see, uh, uh, the version control field is omitted in the trusted apps file format. Uh, it means that an attacker uh, can uh, transfer uh, an old version of the trusted application to a device and use it to overwrite uh, the new app file. Uh, as the signature of the old trusted app uh, is correct, uh, this app will be successfully loaded by the TE. Uh, knowing this, an attacker can uh, bypass uh, security features uh, by, uh, and patches uh, uh, of uh, Xiaomi and MediaTek in the trusted applications uh, by downgrading them to an unpatched version. I will use this vulnerability in my PLC. Okay. Uh, Xiaomi follows the global platform T client API specification, which uh, defines the interface between the client application and the uh, trusted environment. This API is implemented in the uh, libte common SO library, uh, and we can use it, uh, this library uh, to, uh, to access uh, the trusted applications from an Android. But uh, unfortunately, an unprivileged Android application has no permission to communicate with the TE. Uh, SLE NOX uh, prevents uh, access to the corresponding driver uh, and uh, it's possible to work only uh, from uh, a limited number of uh, privileged users uh, such as DRM and uh, media codec. Uh, to bypass we need to use a vulnerability and I, I will show you one a, a bit later. On this slide you can see an example uh, of how to call uh, an, uh, a trusted application uh, from Android. Uh, in, in this case, uh, I sent a comment to the THH admin, the trusted app. Uh, this app expects to receive one input buffer and one output buffer as arguments and the comment ID will be ignored. Okay, uh, trusted apps uh, implement uh, TA invoke command entry point function. Uh, it handles uh, the command ID and buffers sent from the Android side. This function is a perfect target for uh, fuzzing based vulnerability research, and I use a classic combination of uh, AFL and QMU emulator to fuzz uh, Xiaomi trusted applications uh, on a Ubuntu machine. Uh, a, bit, uh, a little later, I will show you a vulnerability related to mobile payment. Okay, uh, now we know what is the Xiaomi trusted environment is. Uh, let's talk about uh, payment system. Okay, uh, modern Xiaomi devices uh, have an embedded uh, mobile payment framework named Tencent Sotter. Uh, uh, Tencent Sotter provides an API to create, sign, and verify uh, payment packages, tra uh, transfer it between a mobile application and a remote uh, backend server. Uh, widget pay based on the Tencent Sorter. On this slide, you can see an architecture uh, of the Sorter, and uh, this platform deals with three levels of keys. This is device key, HTTK, application key, ASK, and uh, business key, AUS key. Okay. Uh, they are all asymmetric RSA keys, and uh, the device key uh, is generated in, in the trusted environment before the device leaves the factory, and uh, the HTTK public key uh, is safely transmitted by Xiaomi to the, uh, to the uh, Tencent uh, TAM server. A third-party Android application, uh, such as uh, WeChat, uh, can request to create an application key. In this case, uh, uh, the uh, private ASCII key uh, will be stored uh, in the TE, and uh, the public ASCII key uh, and its uh, device signature uh, will be uploaded uh, to the uh, app's backend server, uh, which forwards them further to the uh, TAM, uh, TAM server uh, for ver verification with the, the device public key. Uh, in case if the ask uh, packet is legitimate, uh, third party uh, store the uh, application public key on its uh, uh, remote server for future use. Okay. Uh, for, for each business scenario, such as login business or payment business, uh, app uh, should create a business key. Uh, the, generation, the generation process is the same with the application key uh, generation. Okay. To make a payment transaction, an application uh, asks so, uh, a challenge factor uh, from its remote server, usually it's a random string, uh, as an object for signing. 
And um, after user finger print authorization, uh, application sends this, uh, this challenge factor, uh, finger ID, uh, device information, and payment data uh, to the backend server. All this data is signed with the business uh, key, uh, key in the TE, and uh, the public business key will be used to verify uh, the transactions. Tencent Sorter uh, does not provide uh, TE-related code. Uh, uh, Tencent uh, leaves the implementation uh, to the chip or device man man manufacturer, so Xiaomi uh, implemented uh, the Owen Sorter trusted application uh, to store keys and manage key operations. On this slide, you can see a code snippet of the Sorter trusted application. I just listed a few supported comments. Uh, to start the science session, um, Sorter Trusted Application uh, exports uh, a comment or function uh, in its sign, uh, which expects to receive business key alias and a challenge factor as argument. And uh, this function uh, creates a session ID by concatenating uh, both this string to a to, uh, uh, heap-based buffer uh, without checking for overflow. And uh, an attacker can provide uh, arguments of such length that they overflow uh, the heap memory after the session buffer with controlled values. Xiaomi's trusted applications uh, uh, don't have SLR for protection, so this vulnerability can be exploited. Okay, now let's uh, get back to the Tencent Sorter itself. On this slide, you can see its implementation on the Xiaomi devices. Um, Sorter server uh, system application, Android application, uh, exports, uh, I mean, share for public, uh, Sorter service. Uh, this uh, Sorter service binds a vendor point, micro trust point, hardware point, uh, Sorter system service uh, to communicate with the trusted environment. As I mentioned, an unprivileged Android application has no permission to communicate with the TE directly, but it can use the Sorter service as a proxy. Uh, this co uh, Java code uh, binds uh, the Sorter service and then calls uh, uh, the vulnerable init sign function. Okay. So uh, Xiaomi didn't implement an Android permission to protect the Sorter API. Now I will show you a really simple demo uh, when an unprivileged Android application did disable uh, 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 an ability to pay uh, in the WeChat. Okay, so on the right side you see a uh, common line actually is just to show you what is going on and on the left side this is uh, a telephone. Okay, uh, so uh, I implemented a simple uh, tool uh, this name Sotter Caller. Uh, this tool I, I used just to send a comments, a specific comments to the Sotter uh, trusted application, and uh, output will, will be stored in some files uh, pro pro provided in the common line. So, first of all, I just want to show you that. Uh, Sorter, Tencent Sorter is okay, it works, and uh, return some results. For example, uh, using this uh, comment, I asked to generate ask uh, apl uh, application comment, and after that, uh, and, and sign it. So we have two results. Uh, and also, in the Android kernel log, we see that uh, everything is, is okay, so uh, Tencent Sorter responding to our to our request. Now, I I just open an unprivileged Android application. You, it's, it's, uh, so this is a malware. Uh, this application can be downloaded from Play Store. So, uh, and uh, and moment of launching, or on, uh, I implemented a button, a, a, a button uh, block payments. Uh, so in this moment, when you press on a block payment, I just sent a sp uh, used a uh, chain of vul uh, vulnerabilities to uh, break the Tencent sorter, and it's mean, uh, uh, it, uh, as, as you see on the right side, so I tried again to send a comment to the sorter, and we see the, the target dead. And uh, the same situation in the, uh, in the kernel log, so it means that nothing happened, uh, so, so we can't open a session with the Tencent Sorter. It means that in this moment, if we're trying to open WeChat application, 
when we open it, we see that it uh, tries to create a session, uh, open a session with a sorter twice actually, and uh, but sorter is dead, and means that um, uh, WeChat uh, pay application, uh, WeChat application does not provide actually button to uh, make a payment. That's all. So it means that uh, a malware application can close the ability to pay in the WeChat. Okay, but actually we don't want to block payment. We want to uh, extract a private key uh, because key leak, uh, key leak completely compromised the sorter platform, uh, uh, allowing to uh, unauthorized users to, uh, to sign fake payment packages. Okay, uh, to steal one of the private keys, I use another vulnerability. This is arbitrary memory read vulnerability in the old version of the uh, Sorter Trusted application. Uh, if you remember, we can, uh, we can downgrade a trusted application on Xiaomi devices. Um, let's see in the uh, TEC operation argument of the invoke command uh, function, which we used to call uh, Sorter trusted app uh, from from Android. Uh, the caller can provide up to four uh, arguments, uh, such as uh, a number or a buffer, uh, to the trusted application uh, for processing. And the common types are encoded in the param types field. Uh, each trusted application must ensure that the data uh, sent from the insecure site uh, uh, matches the expectation of this app. What happens if uh, an, an, a trusted application expects to receive a pointer to a buffer, but we provide a number? Uh, in this case, if the, this application does not check uh, the type of incoming parameters, uh, so our number will be recognized as, as a virtual address, and uh, sorter application uh, will, uh, will read or write uh, to the memory we specified. Okay. Uh, so, I found that one of the old versions of the uh, Sorter Trusted application uh, lacks uh, checking of incoming parameters, and we can use this uh, to um, uh, and uh, we can use this to achieve a, a arbitrary memory read. Uh, so, uh, if we hold the target device in our hand, we can send uh, has aus key command and specify uh, the, uh, the the uh, address we're interested in as the second argument. And in this case, we will see a content of this address in the Android kernel log, as shown on the slide. If we don't, uh, don't want to deal with uh, kernel log and uh, just want to uh, get information from our code, it, we need to send uh, has our, uh, generate our key command uh, and uh, specifying the target address again as a second argument. And uh, the sort of trusted application will generate the business key uh, based on the, uh, on the content of the address that we specified. And and after that, we can use has a uh, key command many times uh, to find the value which, uh, which matches uh, the generated key. Okay, so we have a read vulnerability. Uh, in addition, there is no ACLR, so all we need to steal the data is just to shape the heap. Okay, I just want to note here uh, that the, uh, to force uh, load, uh, for example, a uh, private device key, uh, we need to send export as key uh, command uh, to the trusted applications, and in this case, uh, this public key will be loaded from the security storage uh, to the uh, heap of the sorter trusted app. Okay. Now I'll show you POC, uh, how, uh, how to extract uh, how to extract device private key. Uh, oops, okay, just a second. So it's, it's very uh, technical, sorry for this. So I will use the same tool that I implemented. It's, it's really simple tool just to provide, uh, to send some information. First of all, we doing downgrade attack. So we overwrite the, uh, um, new version of the uh, Sorter Trusted application with the old one. Uh, this is the first step. After that, we 
we send command to export ATK key. Uh, this command uh, to, uh, to ask official public device key. This is a public key. Just uh, I want to save it in the sum file uh, to, to validate the transactions. This, uh, after that, I, I ask uh, using the export ask key command, uh, give me please uh, authentication. Uh, uh, application key and signature of application key. And again, and we store it in, the, in specific app files. Next step, we use arbitrary read vulnerability to extract private key. Uh, actually, uh, this key uh, is represented by, by, uh, by RSA private exponent and uh, RSA modulus. Um, and so, so now we have all the information we need. We extracted private key, public key, packet, and we just need to validate that this, uh, our signature is correct. Uh, how we can do it? We can use OpenSSL. So using this command, I just validate that the public key uh, and, uh, and, and signature of the original packet is correct. It should be correct because we didn't fix any, in, uh, any data. Uh, ver verify it okay. Next, we are going to patch packet. Uh, this is ask packet, okay. This, we, are, we are going to patch some key, some packet with, with any data. And after that, we're going to, uh, to sign this packet with, uh, uh, with the extracted private key. We can use OpenSSL here because, uh, because OpenSSL doesn't know how to proceed with, uh, with uh, private exponent and modulus, but matrix SSL no. Uh, this is open source tool, matrix SSL. So we sign packet, and the last one, again, we, we use an open SSL to validate that uh, the new packet, uh, packet uh, which we fixed uh, uh, is correct, and signature is correct. So verified, it means that we extracted private key, we use it to sign, and actually it means that we, we can sign any, any, any packet we, we want. Okay. Thank you. To summarize, okay, uh, OEM provided uh, TEs, a very promising area for security research because many security critical uh, features are implemented by OEMs and not by cheap manufacturers. Uh, to prove this, uh, we analyzed the, the Tencent Total platform uh, be, uh, built in the uh, Xiaomi devices and found two ways to attack WeChat app. One is uh, from an unprivileged Android application by uh, exploiting uh, the overflow vulnerability, and the second one by downgrading the Sotter trusted app. Okay. Uh, Xiaomi has fixed uh, most of the uh, uh, vulnerabilities we reported two months ago. So thank you for your attention. You can find a lot of good security research on our Chipcoin Research Board. Thank you.